Uh, hey folks, so um, as Jakob uh, said, despite the fact that uh, he actually finished on time, which is really impressive. Uh, so we're going to have um, a lot fewer slides than Jakob did. I'm going to mainly be showing all sorts of products from certain perspectives and slightly less philosophy as well. Um, we're also uh, going to talk about Optimize, which is essentially the last tool in uh, the tool chain, which is after we have modeled something, after we have actually uh, executed it, we basically have a whole bunch of data that's just generated by using the engine just all sorts of data floating around. And Optimize is a tool in which you can actually utilize all of that data in a visual way. Uh, so uh, I am Niall Dehan, that's me. I am a consultant with Commander, generally a technical consultant. That is Dave. Uh, and we uh, together are going to now show you guys some fun um, uh, stuff about Optimize. Um, first of all, this is a much nicer picture than Jakob showed about the, uh, the ecosystem. I'm sure hey, don't have that. Do you don't talk to marketing? Um, and basically, we have here, uh, as Jakob said, Kavimo, which is the modeling um, and modeler stuff. We also have um, uh, a developer tool, the actual desktop modeler. The engine itself then connects to these three tools here, which again is in production. Uh, when you use those, I'll talk about Cup later on today. But we're actually at this point here, okay? This is where we're talking. We're talking all this data has been produced, it's put into Elasticsearch, and this tool is going to actually help us visualize that. Um, so to tell you just quickly what exactly it does in a very high level, it allows you to build reports. So it's a report builder. You can decide to build all sorts of shapes and sizes and heat maps and things. You can then put those reports into a dashboard uh, where you can view multiple reports um, in one place and maybe assigned to a certain user. And then you can also create alerts that will actually tell you something based on a report you've designed. Okay, you'll get some sort of uh, uh, alert telling you something as well. So um, I'm going to... Um, uh, start with explaining the process that we're going to talk about. Uh, it is this guy right here. So <coughs> here is our simple BPMAN process. It's a relative generic thing. It basically starts like this. We have a user who is applying for a job, okay, for our company. And we sometimes have a hiring manager uh, assigned to it. That's fine. And we have various steps. And at each step, we have these end events where somebody maybe isn't actually uh, so useful after all. Um, uh, as, as a candidate, so we can, might drop them off. And the very, very end, either the candidate has accepted our job offer or they've decided against it, okay? And we also have an event sub-process here in case at any point the candidate decides they actually don't want to um, uh, take the job. So this is a very generic, very simple process that you would imagine is uh, company-wide, which means that it affects a whole lot of different people in different ways. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three perspectives on this process and show sort of different reports based on their perspective. So the very first one is I'm gonna start at a very high level. This is just somebody who is in charge, some sort of CEO type who is in charge of just the overall scope of things. They don't really care about a low granularity, they just care about hiring in general, okay? So if I were that particular person, let's log in. And here we have uh, optimized this front end here. Um, I'm going to just uh, click a report. And this is going to be our first CEO report. And this is going to be, um, let's go, uh, common path, okay? Where do we go most often? It's a very simple report. It's just, I'm interested in CEO, where this actual process goes most often. So I'm gonna choose the hiring demo, so there's the process there that we have. Uh, you can see here that it's, of course, possible to have multiple versions. There's only one deployed, so I'm gonna say all versions, or I can say the one version that's there. The next stage is we have to define the kind of thing we're interested in. And I'm going to go with um, flow node frequency. And then I can simply select the heat map as one of the types of reports. Okay, so here we have a very simple report. So what we're looking at here, um, the brightness really doesn't do this justice, but the, um, the basic idea is that here we have red stuff, meaning this is, gonna, this is happening frequently. And as we go along, we see it gets greener and greener and greener. And then we can see that by the time we get here, very few that have started made it this far. So I can do something really simple, like say, um, how many started this process? About 4,000. Um, and we can see here that it kept up here. And here, a lot of people dropped off. So about 2,800 dropped off at this point. And uh, we can also see really quickly that, skipping to the end, we hired 34 and we lost 50. OK, so that's a perfectly reasonable report. I'll leave that there for now and just save that. Okay, 
So let's um, jump into another report really quickly. Uh, again, from a CEO perspective, time wasted. Okay, so this is actually the time we are spending on. The path through the process is really important. We want to know how often we're getting through it and where things are dropping off at a very high level. But we also might be interested in where people are actually spending their time on this process. So we also have that data. Again, I'll select the same process again. I'll, I'll select a different view here, which would be flow node duration. And then once again, I'll do a heat map. Okay, so of course this is a very different heat map um, because of course the little sequence flows are lighting up. Instead, this is basically showing, is there a lot of feedback from Smart or is it just me? Yep, all right. Um, ooh, yeah, maybe I'll move away from my beard. My beard tends to interfere with things. Um, so this actually shows the most, um, this actually shows a really, really uh, simple thing, which is where we are spending all of our time. Okay, everything red means we spend a lot of time there. Everything green means we don't spend so much time. Uh, specifically, we can see that this big red guy right here, we are spending two weeks organizing this uh, first on-site interview. Okay, quite a long time. And um, we are also spent this one, it's a little greener, we are spending four days. Okay, so this gives us a general overall perspective on where stuff get, uh, spends most of the time and perhaps have bottlenecks. So let's save that report. Okay, good stuff. So the final report I create for my CEO is a really simple one. I would like to know how many people we have hired in the past, let's say, 30 days or something. It's a very, very simple thing. And uh, let's do this one again. Hired. So again, I shall select. Hey, Dave, are you going to close the window? OK, okay and we're going to say, um, uh, count process instance frequency. This time, we are just going to say, OK, there's the number of all of the instances that we started with. This is not useful. This actually doesn't tell me whether uh, how many have actually passed. So instead, I can do something quite interesting. <coughs> wow, that actually worked really. Uh, I can select a specific flow note. I can say, OK, I've got all of the instances, the number that have gone through, which is a fine number indeed. But we might be more interested in just those instances that happen to pass through this particular point. OK, that's important to me because that means that we've actually hired somebody. So we can just say add filter and now we have 34. OK, this also isn't as useful because this is all people we have ever hired essentially gone through this process. So we can add another filter here just to say duration, not duration, start date. Let's say ones that have started in the past <coughs> 30 days. OK, 19. That's a little more reasonable. So I can save that report. And so now um, I have three lovely reports I've created uh, that are quite useful for me as a CEO and that we can then um, uh, view if we need to. So to view those, we actually create a dashboard for these. These reports have been created and they exist, but now basically I'm going to create a dashboard for those. So this is going to be CEO. That's some cool noise going on. Okay, so firstly, I can just, uh, this is the little uh, canvas that I have to work with. And I can basically say, okay, this dashboard is going to require me to have, first of all, the common path is kind of important, so I'll keep that. And then maybe even I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, good stuff. Uh, then maybe I'll also have the time wasted. Well, I mean wasted, it kind of depends on your perspective. But, um, and then maybe I'll also add hiring process. There we go. Oh, hiring process, let's add the uh, hired. Okay, 19. That's not so big, so let's put that over here. Okay. Let's do a Google one. So let's do this one. Oopsie, let's try it one more time. I really like Opera. It's like my favorite um, uh, uh, browser, but Opera doesn't like me. It's a real shame. Okay, and let's add. Hired, there we go. Okay. Okay, and save. Okay, so there we have our very simple dashboard. And it basically means I can log in now and take a look at these reports. And the nice thing is that these reports are not actually looking at something like uh, static data. Okay, optimize is connected to the running process, which means that this guy here, this little number, that could tick up depending on processes that are finished over time. Uh, this heat map could change depending on all sorts of things. And so this is a, a thing that I can come back to. I create the report once, I can define it, and then I can have this page. It's a very high level one. 
So let us uh, do something a little more interesting because this is also, um, uh, this particular um, uh, process is also very interesting for the HR department. Okay, um, let's say time set. Uh, so they have a very different uh, point of view because they don't want a very high granularity. They're more interested in uh, making sure this process actually works most effectively, <coughs> okay? And generally speaking, this report that we have already seen, which is the, uh, let's say, low no duration. Uh, this is a perfectly reasonable report for a CEO because we have certain perspectives. But if I'm a HR manager, I actually have, uh, this isn't as useful because this here, as we saw, took two weeks. This thing here took four days. But if I'm a manager of this process, maybe taking two weeks here is fine. That's actually totally legitimate. That task should take that long. And screening application, maybe four days is way too long. So I want to create a report that somehow helps me understand, are these taking too long individually, not in comparison to each other, which is a very different <coughs> view. So we can start doing something like um, selecting individual elements and adding what are essentially KPIs. So if I select this task here, you can see that we actually have the actual time. And I can say, well, I actually want this to take three days. Um, on average, this guy here, maybe one week is okay. This guy here, maybe three, maybe let's go with 15 days. Okay, and hit apply. So now this basically redoes the map in a very big way. Because now we can pretty clearly say that despite the fact we actually spend quite a lot of time here, we are only at like 93% of the target. So actually this is fine. This is actually not really a problem for us. Um, we can see here that this guy is uh, a grand total of one minute and five seconds over its um, uh, requirement. So it's hitting on 100%. So that's actually green, it's all right. This guy here, that is not so great. That is uh, not looking so good. That is a specific, it's 139% above. Um, but also, of course, um, this is overall. So it's very possible that we could actually end up wanting to say, well, I'm more interested in um, a specific um, uh, process in the last little while. So let's just say processes in the last 30 days, and then I'll save that report as well. Okay, so that's a really simple report that we created from the perspective of HR. Okay, so now I'll just create a few more little reports. So let's um, uh, say HR, what else kind of stuff do they need? Let's um, pop in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say uh, another very important thing for the HR department is knowing when we are doing most of our work. It's a really simple thing, right? We've been doing this process for a while. It's a very manual process as we've seen, and we might be interested in when exactly, uh, what times of year, or when are we actually doing uh, most of the hiring, okay? It's a really simple uh, requirement. And again, we can just say, let's count flow node frequency, let's uh, group by, let's say, month, and let's visualize that as a bar chart. Okay, and maybe we're only interested in, I don't know, the last, uh, let's see this year. Um, or maybe even, yeah. So, even if we can see an area chart might be interesting too. Maybe get rid of that. Okay, so this is a really simple report that just kind of counts how often we've needed to deal with this hiring process over the course of, uh, since December 2016. So you can see that there wasn't a lot of hiring done really up until a big peak in November, December, and then a huge peak then at the end of April. And this kind of <coughs> quite useful because this is again a very nice report that just basically is able to show us um, uh, work time. Okay, and I can save that. Okay, and once again I can um, add that to uh, a dashboard. Okay, uh, which I will not do because it's sake of time. So that is two different perspectives, a very high level perspective. We have the owner of the process's perspective. The final one is the actual person or company or department that uses the process, okay? So let's imagine that we have a sales department, okay? The sales department is one group department that happens to use the hiring process, okay? So, uh, and they have a problem because they are finding that they're not getting a lot of candidates hired, let's say, and they're wondering how come people are not taking the job, is there anything to do this process? So we can say, um, candidates not hired. Okay, so this we would take 
Um, let's say the hiring demo, let's go with uh, blow node frequency, uh, heat map. Okay, so this isn't too useful because it's not specific to sales. So what we need to do is we can do things like use process variables. Because as well as actually understanding where everything has been, how long everything has taken, and the flow, we also get lots of actual data about each individual process. So for instance, I might say, I'm only interested in sales and marketing. Okay, great stuff. But I'm also specifically interested in guys who arrived here, who actively were offered a job but said no thank you. Okay, and that shows us this report. So this shows us something pretty clear, first of all. Um, absolutely everybody who uh, was offered the job or refused never had the second on-site interview, for instance. So that might be relevant, it might not, but this is uh, where we're creating correlations, whether they're relevant or not is uh, kind of up to you guys. So, and we can save that sort of thing there. So now we have like the same process that has completely different views and completely depend on how you use the process and if it's relevant to you. Um, is also reporting and creating dashboards is one thing, but if you're the kind of person who does process improvement, we're also interested in analysis of the process. And just to show you really quickly, we can do stuff like, I'm not interested in creating a report here, I'm just trying to find out correlations. I wanna play around with the data. And this is what the analysis part is for. So if we see here that we have, we've selected a hiring process, and maybe uh, right now this would be able to help us correlate the relevance between an endpoint and a, a gateway. So does going through one way or another have any relevance on a specific end event? So let's select, for instance, this one here. So if we see here, of the 4,000 processes, about 22% arrived at this point, which means that 22% actually of, um, of people decided they didn't want to do that anymore. So let's do that. And let's say if that had any, any bearing on on-site interviews, or more importantly, let's say, whether we needed to assign automatically or not. So this shows that on the right here, it shows all instances. So most of the time we went no, we automatically assigned it, okay? And you see that in those cases, chances are that we would reach this end event if we actually uh, didn't automatically assign. Simple correlation between data and, and XOR gateways. The very final thing I want to show you is alerts. So I created a process earlier that showed that, uh, find out how many hires we have. In our company, we do um, like a little newbie training whenever we have a certain number of people that are hired over a certain period. So um, if we wanted to find out we've hired X number of people, we should let somebody know about this. We can simply see hired, we can send an email to myself, and we can say hired CEO, and if it's above, let's say, nine, then we can add an alert. So now we've created that report, hired, and we've been able to create a really simple alert for that. So now we get an email whenever that happens. I can also create an alert as well whenever um, the, um, uh, the thing is solved. So you can keep getting results until this thing is solved. So that's sort of a quick look at Optimize and the use cases and things. Um, I assume I'm out of time, am I? Good, good. Am I on time? Or did I yap at this? I think you're on a bit. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> One minute, I guess that's fine. So yeah, so it's a very useful thing. It's just a way of being able to take all this data and actually visualize it nicely. We've always stored this data in Commander for many, many years. So um, the nice thing to optimize is it's not something that if you're using, uh, if you start using Commando or you've been using Commando for a while, you need to do anything else. You can just basically start it up, point it at your engine, and you just get this way of just uh, creating this data. Okay, I'll probably have any questions later. I'm now over two minutes now, okay? We're good? Okay, great, thanks a lot, guys. That's, I think, everything I want to share right now.